So I'd just like to welcome everyone to Jimmy Art Center and to the Shifting Earth Symposium. My name is Don Ross, and I'm head of collections at Art Jamil, and also co-curate the Artist Garden Commission's program uh, here at Art Jamil, which are projects that really sparked the idea for this symposium. I work on these projects alongside my colleague, Nadine El Khoury, who's assistant curator at Art Jamil and has, a, has not only put together this amazing symposium and list of speakers, uh, but also is my co-host. So we'll be, you'll be seeing quite a bit of us uh, over the next couple of days. So thank you very much for taking the time to be here on your weekend, especially when we're talking about the environment and nature and we're asking you to spend two days indoors. So thank you very much. <laughs> and also to our wonderful lineup of speakers, uh, many who have traveled quite long distances and others maybe not so long and are more locally based. But we're really thrilled to have you with us here today and very much looking forward to the discussions that will unfold over the next two days. So just to tell you a little bit about the Artist Garden, and for anyone who hasn't seen the Artist Garden yet, it's just out these doors here to my left and down the uh, kind of corridor or colonnade here at the very end. Uh, our, our artist garden at the moment is currently um, called The Desert is a Forest by Sunuj D and the Matanyong. Uh, they'll be speaking about this a little bit later. But really we uh, wanted this, these commissions to be kind of more research-based commissions spread over two years and very collaborative in nature. We invite an artist to lead on each project and these projects really aim to open up conversations around the complex issues that shape environmental concerns and practices on a local, regional, and international level. So through these discussions that we had with the artists and the participants, this is really how the symposium evolved. But we really wanted to open up a broader discussion around these topics. And, uh, you know, and just not necessarily just around the artist garden, but also looking at ecology and bringing to get together other authorities in various fields of research, such as artists, curators, botanists, anthropologists, historians, and sociologists. So this is the first iteration of the artist garden, which we're very excited about. And this is going to be a two year uh, kind of well, held every two years to align with the Artist Garden Commissions. So this particular iteration is going to explore the biodiversity and ethnobotany of the UAE landscape and the broader Arabian Peninsula, and also has a wider international focus, um, going as far as Costa Rica, as one of our speakers who will be here tomorrow. So all of our speakers today are very accomplished in their fields. So I'm not going to go into too much detail when I introduce them of their bios, but they are all in the program booklet. So please do grab a copy of this. They're all at the back. So I'd like to introduce Sunoj D, who is an artist, and our anthropologist and archaeologist Namata Niyong, who are both based in India. Shahina Kazanfar, who is a botanist and author based in the UK. Charles Al Hayek, who is a history professor and cultural heritage consultant based in Lebanon. Moza Al Matrushi, who is an artist, chef, and writer based in the UAE. Jonathan Miller Weisberger, who is an ethnobotanist and author based in Costa Rica. Asuncion Melinas Gordo, who is an artist and researcher based in Spain. Soledad Gutierrez, who is a chief curator and executive producer of TBA 21 on St. H and based in Spain as well. Dr. Eloisa Martin, associate professor of so sociology in the UAE. And artist Nala Taba, who is also based in the UAE. So just to give you a bit of structure over the next two days, there'll be two panels each day, each running for about two to two and a half hours with a short break in between. Uh, we also have a film program that's running in Gallery 9, which is on Level 2, on this side of the building. Um, this will be running today, tomorrow, and on Monday. And the times, again, and all of the films are listed in the booklet. We also have Moza al and Asun, Asunchi and Malinas Gordo's film that we'll be showing. So please do have a look if you have some spare time. 
And I would now like to introduce our first panel, which is titled, What Have Do Plants Done For Us? This panel will focus on the plants and animals of the UAE and the broader Arabian Peninsula, looking at the relationship between humans and non-humans within the local landscape, plants and trees as the basis of traditional medicine practices and traditional food, and plants that are associated with regional cultural practices and identities. So the first presentation is, by, is going to be by Sunujdi and Namrata. They will speak about the current artist garden project, Desert is a Forest, as well as Lakshima Nevis, which is an interdisciplinary space they run in Kerala, India. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming our first speakers to the stage, Sanuj and Namrata. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for making it here. And um, OK, we won't take much time. We'll <laughs> Turn this. begin the talk with a small audio clip, which uh, was performed when the artist garden was opened. عرفج الصفيرة العلقي الصفراوي الأرطة I look at you and I wonder what will the bees spill that the wind could not hold? What will man hear when the land whispers on a silent dawn? What will the river reveal that the forest could not hide? Will it be a conversation or will it be a confusion? Will it be a rumble of sounds boomerang or a cacophony of wings of a wasp falling down on the ground? What is this landscape? A thousand histories buried or a thousand memories retold again and again until yesterday is no longer today. Here I look at you again and I wonder, maybe the storms rode on the back of a high mountain goat until it reached the shores of a human's paradise. Maybe the curse of the rice meandered till the end of the desert or Maybe the blue moon swirled the crystal sand so high up that even the dead fumbled in their deep slumber. And somehow, as the songs reached a feverish pitch, time got confused again. Confused and entangled. This was a conversation when the man and the ant, the goat and the boat, the sand and the stone, the tree and the bee waited for the same slice of the sun. Between you and me, somewhere between the noon and the moon, lies an ocean of hope and desires, riding on the waves of fears and failures. When the eagle sweeps below, someone beneath the ground scurries deeper. When the shades of leaves grow longer, some build more homes and some look for better homes. Who inhabits this forest? Is it me or is it you? Or is it the spiders in the mist? Who knows why we speak gibberish or lullabies? Who knows why we think we think, delusions or lucidity? Who knows why we write? arrogance or poetry. Imagine if we forgot memories, if our words got swallowed in our veins, our eyes got blurred in the sun, our dreams vanished like the sunset blooms of Sakhbar. Will we then know each leaf in each branch of a Ghaf tree or the smell of an anthill tunnel? I, the sweet taste of amnesia, and I must confess, the human lived in its fortress of oblivion and an intoxicating bed of confusion. And just like that, lovers came and went, mountains submerged and emerged, oceans swirled and swayed, dust traveled, seeds flew, metal rusted, Goats proliferated, patterns disappeared and reappeared. And as I look at you again, and as my arms get weary with time, 
Hermel. I still wonder, who is this forest? Desert is a forest as a, as a philosophy or as a thought, and, and, as, and it's an idea. It, it emerged from confusion. And, uh, and still confused. And we are still confused, yeah. you know? And this confusion is part of our everyday life, and also which forms our <laughs> practice at the same time. And, uh, you know, like, what is entanglement? You know, the first question that confuses us. What, who is the human in the landscape? Or what is a language? Yeah. Or what is the relationship between the plant, the human, the goat, the soil, and the bee? I mean, a desert is a forest. Quintessential is about all these questions. And our everyday life is dealing with non-humans. So we live with ducks, chickens, goats, cows, cats, dog, and every day is thinking that how, how to survive, how to gather food for them and for, for us. Yeah. So. And also this, this came also at the same time when we decided to uh, start living with animals. Mm -hmm. And uh, it began with the cow, then the goats came, then the chickens came, then the ducks came. Yeah. We thought we'll become farmers, yeah. and uh, we'll, we, we thought we will sustain ourselves. Yeah. To become farmers, to become we farmers. started collecting seeds to plant. And it's also come from our baggage of, you know, we were looking for heirloom seeds, very, very rare seeds, and we collected and we started planted and we waited for sprouting. And we waited, waited, waited. It never sprouted. <laughs> then we realized, we looked and we realized that the seeds are taken by ants. All the seeds are disappeared. None of the seeds sprouted. None of the seeds sprouted and because all the seeds are fantastic. Of, and all the dreams of food security vanished. Yeah. You know? and the, that's when the uh, ants think, taught us yeah. to see. So yeah. seeing, we begin, started seeing, not coming with the baggage of farming, how you are. Then they also told us, you're not farmers, to think in that angle. Yes. How, how farming is not what we are looking at. We are looking at the entanglement between the relate Because why seeds they take? That's the most nutritious thing. It's like egg. Ants love it. Because it's like a, I don't know, it's a party for them, you know? Very heirloom seeds we sourced to different places and they just took away yeah, everything. Yeah. So this is also the point, I think, the first time we thought of what does seeing means mm. in a landscape. How do you see? Yeah. Is it the plant which you are going to eat, but then at the plant is also very important food yeah. or maybe important poison for somebody else yeah. in different contexts or in different landscape? That's what our goats, we call our goats botanists because they are our botanists. They teach us what is plant and they teach us relationship between plant and other animal. So we go for grazing every day and this beautiful landscape we go and we were excited in the beginning, wow, it's beautiful. And w when we started grazing, we started realizing actually it is not that beautiful. It is a, a very conflict competitive terrain because there are many other grazers, exactly. other animals. Exactly. And Animals fight for food, they hit each other, you know, and we had to hold on. And these are not commons, these are farmers' lands, they allow after harvesting to graze. Yes. So we, do, we can't graze throughout the year, we have a six, seven months Seasonal. season yes. to graze. Yeah. So again, again here, again, we, 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 when we first started grazing, we thought, wow, it's a beautiful landscape, it's, it's quite something, right? This again pushed us to rethink, how do you see a landscape again? Yeah. You know, it's again, these goats, which we go with grazing for, they tell us which plants are in season and which plants are not in season, you know? That's when I started, that's when I started thinking, you know? So yeah. what is seasonal eating means? What yeah. is seasonal plants? Do yeah. we, how do you understand season? Yeah. You know, and it, so season is basically not just waiting for the plant to be eaten. It's season is also about rejection. Yeah. You reject what you ate before. Yeah. You know, we had an incident that, like, you know, because non-grazing season, they are inside the shed. 
we made a very beautiful bamboo woven house for them. And they stay there many months there. So that time, we had to go for grass cutting. We go different places, forage uh, food for them. And there is one particular leaf. They love it. All of them fight for it. They love it. And we found one place, and we got excited. And we like, let's, let's remove everything. And then we came with a big bundle in our head. And we gave them. They just rejected. And that's when we look at, no. They don't eat same food how we eat every day. For them, food is a very season related. So that's the entanglement we started looking at through season. Only humans eat the same food every day. Throughout the year. Throughout the year. Tomato we can eat every day. Yes. You know, but then they're favorite and they we've got angry because like we struggled and found and we got it and they just rejected, you know. We so said, Man, you used to eat this. So this conflict is always the, the questions it's become. Yeah. It's, the, it's the confusion every day. And if the confusion is coming, that we, see, the thing is, we come with the baggage of how the structure functions. You know, you have to take, so you have the structure of how your farmer neighbors or your, yeah. or your family tells you this is how you do farming or this is how you domesticate, this is how you structure. But then when you follow that, something else happens. And that's the confusing part of the whole, yeah. uh, you know, the whole practice. Yeah. So this, the, these questions are coming up like that, in that format. So another interesting, I mean, we'll be telling a lot of stories, because, yeah, because the stories, I mean, it's... That it's, is our practice, that's our, I mean, <laughs> everyday life. Uh, because these incidents are our, our, our source, you can say, you know. So one day we were grazing one morning, and there's one old woman who is our neighbor, Co our, our Co colleague, basically, Co our grazing Grazer. colleague. And then she came with her cows, and we were with our goats. And she, was, she left her cows, our goats are grazing, and then she's plucking something from the land, like small, small branches of leaves. And uh, she came to me, and then she's like, oh, this is supposed to be eaten this month. If, if not, you'll get sick. Yeah. And then this is the plant, which also the goats also will eat this season. Yeah. Then later, she told that you have to eat this because if you don't eat this, goats also might not like it yeah. at the same time. So, uh, it's I mean, a, we also start <laughs> following and collecting. Yeah. And that's where we look at goat also eating and we also eating. So, in the desert is the a forest. forest. We, also, look, yeah. we looked at the plants through, it started from our goats and then in UAE landscape. Then we started looking at UAE goats, what they used to eat when they're grazing. But then here, it's not allowed. Some parts of UAE, it's not allowed grazing. So then we figure out what goat is eating, what human is eating. Then we started l meeting people. And then I think what was interesting in the whole research process was yeah. we asked about particular plants, which is in the artist's garden. Yeah. And uh, we asked them the first question, do goats eat it also? They said, yes, of course. And at the same time, a lot of memories started coming back from yeah, the people, yeah. which we found very beautiful yeah. in the process. And they said, how do you know about all these plants? He said, we, we don't know goats know about it. We're yeah. just following the trail of a goat. Yeah. You know, so I think the, 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 and the and artist... There, were, there yeah. also was season. They were telling this particular time we used to make yes, this yes. food. Uh, and so the taste become a memory. Taste become a season. And the plant become uh, irrelevant because through desert is a forest we are not looking at the plant but we are looking at there is a entanglement, entanglement. yeah there's much beyond just a plant and a food there is a relation with non-human human season yeah and yeah then the another thing that you are also which also was a big uh, a question in the project research was uh, what is domestication? Like, you know, it's come now that ev um, domestication in the structure that we understand today, yeah. you know, how it did it emerge. Mm. So the goat again was our entry point. Yeah. And as we started researching, goat was also one of the first non-human which started, which humans started living with. Mm. So in a way, the domestication process, what happened? Who domesticated yeah. whom and why domestication continues in the way it's, it's, it's existing today yeah, in the structure yeah. format. So these structures are also quite problematic because, uh, because we do have to borrow these uh, methodologies in our life yeah. every day. But that's also where also the conflict comes. Yeah. And now, now with our goats and all the non-humans in the land, we don't know, did we domesticate them or they domesticated? Because 
we have to work on their their terms you know there is a, a new language evolved they see us more than we are seeing them they so much observe us and they can demand when they are hungry they demand they scream and we know each scream means what their hunger scream and their favorite leaf if we are hiding to give later they know they get it they smell it and they say like no we want that and they can make us come out of the house and give yes you know it's a so there is a, a very different kind of language then we start thinking you know, about what, what is, is language? language yeah it's like you know is it uh, is it the words that we speak right now yeah. but then when we go to a landscape we really don't know yeah. how to understand yeah. gestures yeah. sounds or smells yeah. but how is it that you know there's another story sorry yeah. that there you know we have uh, we have this chicken so when we they sell chicken eggs so you know we uh, so chicken eggs have a have a period of laying eggs and they go off for 21 days of heat, heat when they are on fever because they have to hatch the eggs right so, so according to the farming technology uh, technology <laughs> that heat is your loss because they're not laying egg so the heat have to go very fast so we got lot of people's information oh you dip them in cold water so we started dipping all the heat uh, like who stopped uh, stopped laying egg and then who's on fe we called fever actually fever once we dip in the and they they run away they make big noise and run away they don't like it and you have to repeat that to two days then it might go off and then they start producing again we did that and afternoon time after lunch we sleep everybody sleep that is non human human it's like a com <laughs> compulsory rest <laughs> in the land so that time this dipped chicken is disappeared and she is gone so the basically goats sleep as a ball together when so they get up there are enemies fight everything happened but then sleeping time they come together and sleep this chicken is gone and because the warmth we will get the water to go moisture to go away it sat on the goat the whole ball and one chicken is there so that's when we started thinking like, what is it that they talk what, what they would have spoke how do you how the communication would happen? have happened and the goat you know? get up but then goat balance such a way the chicken doesn't fall it's on the back yes you know it's just uh, i mean yeah that's where the language we started thinking what is the is there is any language yeah or what is a human's hu language yeah. is it uh, is it sound or yeah. is it uh, gestures or is it uh, i don't know i really like yeah. you know it's a, it's a, it's a constant pursuit you know in a way yeah. this this kind of these questions so this is again another image where currently we have done this and come here yeah so because now they can eat so that they can eat the food as we're talking about food security you know we we began with food security for us we think we think we'll grow these these seeds the seeds will give our food to us and we are secured right but then when these when these animals are coming it's a it's a double the conflict where yeah. do you source food with yeah. source food for them when in that structure of domestication yeah. when they are not free when yeah. we have constructed this structure for them to stay for our own economic yeah. benefit or the gain or sustainability yeah. so all these uh, uh, plants which we think is uh, is 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 a uh, is food is also very high competition among farmers because yeah. it's also very scarce resource so there's a lot of politics happening among farmers too because it's a small land holding or a small uh, animal holding yeah. and e these plants all at the same time are do not are not proliferating as yeah. they used to be proliferating these before are, these are the jackfruit leaves and goats love it so we uh, so we have this contact like a, a network that people who cut trees to build house so we tell them if you're cutting jackfruit tree just call us we come and collect all the leaves and we uh, we store it because if it's dry also they love it they they love this but then this is their treat we don't give them all the time you know they have to graze now grazing season so grazing season we don't give they they graze we all graze actually <laughs> we together graze uh, that's our ducks and structure actually there's another yes so beginning we used to separate everybody chicken one section they have one beautiful house ducks another section beautiful house because the ducks come and dirty the water of the chicken and chickens don't like dirty water to drink so and one one point actually the the net the partition broke and the ducks come over here and 
there also we don't know what they spoke. Again, the language or communication. One bowl of chickens, ducks eat, drink, and dirty. <laughs> and one bowl, they leave it for chicken. They don't dirty that. They purposely do that. They, uh, Initially, they used to dirty all the waters yeah. because uh, chickens don't like the muddy <laughs> water. But then over time, we noticed they purposely are avoiding one bowl of water yeah. so that, that the chickens can drink the water. Yeah. So now, now we don't have a structure. Then we said, OK, th then that is questioning the architecture yeah. of human domestication. So we said, OK, no need uh, structure. Then we removed. And now they <laughs> live, <laughs> live happily ever after, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and we removed the chicken's house. So now the chickens stay on the tree branches the, in the night, and they know the food place, and they come to the food they place They spread to throughout eat. the land, but yeah. they know where to come for the food. Yeah. That is also yeah. <laughs> kind of, you know, uh, the whole problem of domestication, yeah. you know? But otherwise, they know how to for forage their own yeah. food. I think so uh, through domestication, I think a lot of these non-humans who stays with us have also forgotten foraging. Yeah. So forgotten the natural ways of eating. Sometimes yeah. we have to catch worms and fish to make them feel good <laughs> about their own practices. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so the uh, yeah, this is our practice. This is our everyday life, and this is for desert is the forest. Uh, it's emerged. It emerged. It is, yeah. I think it is the questions which I think we are constantly asking to ourselves, and it's coming from observation every day or yeah. living with them every day. Yeah. And it's trans and and that's when we also uh, I think one of the one of the uh, research when uh, we when Nadine and Don went to Hatta, there was a farmer, there's a goat farmer who says that who once said that. Yeah. Uh, we don't wait for the goats to come. They yeah. know how to come back yeah, home. Yeah. So how do you know how when to come back home to a structure? So they have a fence and they need to come back yeah. and it's the evening time. So they always, and then they never come in certain seasons. Yeah. So certain seasons, some plants also disappear and some plants and also have grown back. And they come back another season with maybe babies, you know, the bigger family they become. Yeah. 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 Now we play a sound piece. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Uh, so there is another sound piece. We'll play that. Oh, after the sec. <laughs> I don't know. That's a goat, goat structure. And it is, I think, um, see, no, I also, these structures are also very specific to Sorry, different parts part of India. Yeah. Because the, uh, especially in Kerala, because, you know, where we stay, there is no commons. Yeah. There is no uh, graze. Or there's land. no pri pasture. There's always private land. So the architecture of the structure is a very important factor when you have a small animal husbandry uh, economic setup. Yeah. So, so you need a lot of um, technical in architectural advice from experts, which are basically yeah. farmers, who tell you how to build a goat house or yeah. how to build a cow house. And these materials are also important. Yeah. These materials also have been a very important yeah. part of this yeah. construction. The stage oh. is always set. However, it has a lyrical beauty of fluidity and the characters are ephemeral. The sonority every day reaches pitching high and meanders between multiple forms of decibels with long, intermittent silences. The gestures are extravagant and subtle at the same time. Worth noting is Tito. Tiptoe is a very sensuous gait layered with a bit of caution, a bit of nonchalance, and sometimes comical. There is also a fair bit of intense ogling deep into the distance. Traces in the distance do not just disappear, but are keenly noted and stored in a registry of sorts. Fatima Bibi understands the gravity of this theatrical stage. There is something utterly beautiful in the wisdom of her clan. Following closely on the heels of Fatima Bibi is Mohanlal, each drawing legitimacy and access to power over the clan from each other. A day in the stage is always momentous. There is always an act of food, war, nourishment, cleansing, sleeping, sex, delivery, talking, care, isolation, lingering, Forgetfulness, brooding, and death. The drama always unfolds at the dusk 
when the eyes lose the capability to perceive darkness. The day draws to an end very peacefully. The dusk is a moment of confusion. It can confuse the heart and it can confuse the intent. In that moment, when the light is unintelligible, how does Fatima Bibi and Mohanlal put to rest the vagaries of daylight? How is it so easy? How is it at that moment of dusk? Hierarchies submerge, genders disappear, power irrelevant, and death is just like a whisk of air. Eavesdropping into a midday conversation of the clan, there is a sense of utter loss in comprehension in that wonderful moment of siesta. They could almost imitate death in that posture, every day. How is it that they can fathom death and the human is still clasped into the tall belief of immortality? Apparently, eons back, Mohanlal whispered a story in the ears of a dog. The dog refuses to divulge that story. Maybe the human is too naive to understand that story. You see, the dangers of curiosity of a human mind can have debilitating impacts. The curiosity is often cooked with a sprinkle of greed and a saute of mistrust. And hence, it took a metal fence, two gates, few aluminium plates, two water bowls, a hand-woven bamboo house, and three characters with the names to connive this story. The rest of the clan and all the others in different neighborhoods, fortunately, do not get names and identities. And with that, a significant amount of history and ancestry escaped from the human's narrow perception. Alas, this can never be a complete story. Figments meet and collide. Remains are smeared into the soil, death like a breath of air. Perplexity constant and over. Ignorance occurs and estrangement will never be the forest. Sometimes Fatima Bibi and her clan are slightly baffled at their roles with the humans. They are still not sure if they asked for a relationship. A different sort of perplexity sometimes moves through the hollow corners of the human mind. They still do not know why they wanted Fatima Bibi and her clan. This clan has innumerable allies beyond the human. And the human definitely is the most confusing ally for them. Sadly, the human is a lonely creature with no allies, but needs an assistance of a metal fence and two gates to make allies. There is never a complete story. There are no complete storytellers. There are mementos to defy and honor death. And unfortunately, Fatima Bibi, Mohanlal, and the dog is no longer edible. Yeah, that's it. I think. <laughs> Thank you.